The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Oil, that wonderful salad and cooking oil, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. There's great news this evening for every family that loves popcorn. Just to prove to you that the easy, delicious way to fix homemade popcorn is with Kraft Oil, the Kraft folks will give you a package of Jolly Time Popcorn. The popcorn is wrapped around the neck of every bottle of Kraft Oil, and it's absolutely free when you buy the oil at your grocer's. Get your gift package of popcorn tomorrow when you buy Kraft Oil. If there's one thing Bertie likes better than working for Mr. Gill's sleeve, it's a day off. Of course, I get my regular day off, but when I want an extra day, it takes a little maneuvering. Bertie don't ask anybody for it. She just works it around so they give it to her. <laughs> I had for campaign all mapped out when Mr. Gillespie came home. Hello, Bertie. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. Has the paper come? Yes, sir. The paper's right by the cigar that Bertie put there on that table sitting by your easy chair in front of which she put your slipper. Well, thank you, Bertie. You've been busy? Yes, sir. Bertie's been busy today. She cleaned the house, done the washing, done the mending. And... You're fine. Let me see what the headlines are. And on top of that, Bertie's done the week's marketing and washed the woodwork. You're good for you. Yes, sir. If Bertie puts in the day tomorrow like she has today, then won't, she won't have a thing to do by Friday. Oh? And there won't be anybody here to cook dinner for Friday. There won't? No, sir. Because Friday is the day all you folks go to Judge Hooker's for his annual dinner. Zeke. I'd forgotten about the judge's annual dinner for the little family. Yes, sir. Friday is the day. And Bertie will have all her work done and nobody to cook for and she'll be sitting here all alone with nothing to do. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Bertie, why don't you take Friday off? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Nobody like Bertie. Hard-working, unselfish. It never occurred to her to come up and just ask for a day off. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you reminded me of the judge's dinner. He'd be very offended if we forgot. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Uncle Mort. Marjorie. Nice to see you, my dear. I was wondering where Leroy was. I've been over to Marge's. Oh? Visiting with your sister? Visiting? He comes to eat. Well, I should to bump into half a chocolate cake in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm glad you came over, Marjorie. I hope you and Leroy haven't forgotten Judge Hooker's annual dinner. Oh, grown. Leroy, is that nice? Well, you have to admit, Unky, that the judge's dinners aren't much fun. Well, they are to him. Well, he can have my plate of chicken fricassee. Let him have twice as much fun. <laughs> Young man, that'll do. I'm not fond of his fricassee either, but I... Gee, I'd forgotten about it, Unky. Has the judge called? No, but he counts on us every year. Forgetting this dinner would be like forgetting Thanksgiving. But at Thanksgiving, you get your turkey whole. Not chopped up chicken held together with a lot of gooey fricassee. <laughs> That's enough kidding, Leroy. Who's kidding? He... <laughs> Shall we repair to the parlor? I'll show you my slides of Old Faithful and the Chicago World's Fair. Murder. Leroy, don't remind us. Gee, I wonder if by some stroke of good luck the judge has forgotten. Judge hasn't contacted me yet. I thought sure he'd call last night and invite us. If I can get by today, I'll know you forgot about it. I wonder if Peavy's seen the judge in the last day or so. Hello, Peavy. 
Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Baby, have you seen Judge Hooker recently? No. Are you looking for him? Well, not exactly. As a matter of fact, I'll be happy if I don't see him until after tomorrow night. You quiet tomorrow night? Well, it's the judge's dinner for the little family. Oh, my, my. <laughs> judge is a fine, sentimental gentleman. Yes, he is. But frankly, we were all just a little fed up with his chicken fricassee dinner. Yeah, I can understand that. And how often can you look at Old Faithful? Well, I look at Mrs. Peavy every morning. <laughs> Why, Peavy? <laughs> That's a term of endearment, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. Peavy has had my breakfast ready promptly at 7.30 every morning for 30 years. That's what I call faithful. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I have to get up and eat it whether I want to or not. <laughs> oh. oh. There's the judge getting out of his car now. Say, he's coming in here. Well, this is it, Petey. I guess so. When he invites us, we'll just have to accept. Greetings, gentlemen. Well, hello, Judge. Hello, Horace. Gilday, I haven't seen you in quite a while. You well, we've both been busy, Judge. I said to myself the other night... I wonder how Gildy and Marjorie and Leroy are getting along. I don't see them often enough. Well, we were talking about you the other night, too. Oh? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve was talking about you just a minute ago. <laughs> then you haven't forgotten me, have you, old friend? Judge, our little family could never forget you. Well, I've wondered. Sometimes as children grow up, they lose interest in their more elderly friends. Oh, not us, Judge. I wasn't talking about you, Gildy. I was talking about Marjorie and Leroy. But they love you dearly, Horace. Well, I'd love both of you dearly if you'd buy something. <laughs> <laughs> I do need a package of razor blades, Peavy. I'll just take one off the counter here. Very well. Have to get to my office now. Uh, Gildy, is there anything on your mind that you'd like to tell me since you haven't seen me in quite a while? Nothing I can think of, Horace. What about you? No, I suppose there's nothing to say. <laughs> Goodbye, Peter. Come again, Judge. Thank you. Goodbye, gentlemen. You see you around, Judge. He didn't say a word about the dinner, Peavy. He didn't pay for the razor bread, did he? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll put him on your boat. You know, I don't think I like the judge's attitude. Well, you should like it very much. Well, I won't say I was exactly looking forward to going. But it's pretty inconsiderate of him not to invite us. How's that? Well, it boils down to one or two things. The judge either forgot about our traditional dinner, which is a terrible insult, or he doesn't want us, which is worse. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I should think you'd be very happy over this turn of events. Well, we kid a lot. But you don't just toss a fine old tradition out the window, Peavy. Yeah, you open the window, the judge threw it out. <coughs> yeah, I can see it all now. The old goat's been planning to sneak out of his obligation. Yeah? I gave him every chance to invite us. <laughs> no, I know what I'll do now. I'll make a date with Grace Tuttle for tomorrow night. You don't say. And then if Hooker's conscience bothers him, he decides to invite us at the last minute, I'll tell him I forgot about his stuffy old dinner. My, my. And my conscience won't bother me a bit. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't say that. Imagine the judge giving us the brush off. Well, it's going to work out all right. We hope Grace is home. I'll set up the date right now. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. <laughs> I thought I'd run by and take a chance on your being home from school. I was just about to leave. Oh? I have to go to Hogan Brothers and do some shopping. Well, I'll drive you down. Well, that'll be wonderful. We teachers have so little time. Let's go. And I just didn't want to miss this sale. Say, I see your ankle seems to be all right after you sprained it in my attic last week. Oh, it's fine. In a way, I'm sorry to hear that, Grace. What? It was a lot of fun carrying you down the attic stairs. Oh, Throckmorton. May I carry you down the porch step? Don't be silly. It's a long way. Two whole steps. 
Come on, Throckmorton. Well, lift you into the car. Oh, stop it. I've never seen such a would-be athlete. Or did you see the first Robin today? <laughs> it just isn't that Springs are on the corner. Well, if you're so anxious to do manual labor, you may carry my packages for me. Well, I have my price. Oh? How about a date tomorrow night? A date tomorrow night? Well, let's see. Uh, there are several things I plan to do. There are? If you hadn't asked me to go out. <laughs> Hi, George. This is going to be better than sitting around with an old goat. Yeah, I'll let you out at the door, Grace, and go park the car. All right, I'll meet you at the information desk. All right. Anything on your shopping list I can get for you? Well, I want three pairs of 51-gauge, 15-denier nylon hose in that liquid amber shade. Mm -hmm. I'll just feature the information. <laughs> I'll see you in a few minutes. While he's parking the car, I'll have time to look at handbags. My, I do hope everything isn't picked over. Hello there, Miss Nuttall. Why, Judge Hooker, don't tell me you're buying some pretty girl a purse. As a matter of fact, I am. You know Gildy's niece, Marjorie, of course. Yes. Do you think she'd like this one? Well, I know I would. It's adorable. Well, I'd buy you one, too, but I'm afraid Gildy would get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you uh, you know, he might. Mr. Bethany Cash. After I'm waited on here, I must get something for Leroy, too. Is it a special occasion? It once was. Oh, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, not at all. Matter of fact, I'm glad you asked me because you're such a dear friend of Gilda. What is it, Judge? Every year on February 12th, Gildersleeve, Marjorie, Leroy, and I have gotten together for dinner. You see, I'm the children's godfather. I didn't know that. Yes, it was I who turned them over to Gilda years ago. But I'm afraid they've outgrown me. Oh, you shouldn't say that, Judge. I know Throckmorton is very fond of you. Well... Last year at my house, I detected a change. I could see they were no longer interested in the simple pleasures that I was able to provide. You poor dear. As we said goodbye, we made our plans again for this year. But I'm afraid they were hollow ones. Well, I don't see how Throckmorton could forget an occasion like that. Well, I saw him this morning. I gave him every opportunity, and he didn't choose to bring it up. A big lug. So I will carry on the tradition in my own way. I'll just quietly take my gifts of devotion to the children and drop them by the house. I'm their godfather, you know. Now, if you'll excuse me. Certainly, Judge. Goodbye, Miss Tuttle. Goodbye. That's Frockmorton P. Gildersleeve. How could he treat nice old Judge Hooker that way? How could he be so, so callous? Excuse me. Pardon me, please. Well, hello, Grace. Don't you hello me. Who's that? Rock Morton, how can you be so inconsiderate? Me? Yeah, I've been waiting here for you. Well, you can just wait from now on. You but Grace. Goodbye, you you ingrate. What did I do? The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Popcorn's a treat almost any time, but doesn't it taste best of all when the whole family's together on a winter evening and the corn comes freshly popped from your own kitchen? That's why, for a short time, the Kraft folks are making a very special offer. They want to prove that the easy, delicious way to fix your popcorn at home is with Kraft oil. And to urge you to try it, they're giving you a package of popcorn absolutely free when you buy Kraft oil at your grocer's. It's a three-ounce package of Jolly Time Popcorn, enough to make three quarts. And it's wrapped around the neck of the Kraft Oil bottle. Then, when you have a hankering for popcorn, just heat a little Kraft Oil in your skillet or popper and empty in the corn. Before you know it, your feast is ready to serve. And what a feast! 
Jolly Time pops fluffy and crisp in craft oil without a trace of oiliness. At the same time you pick up your gift package of popcorn, also look for a separate certificate worth three dollars toward the purchase of a whirlwind electric corn popper. You'll find these certificates wherever you see a craft oil display. Remember, both the popcorn and the certificate are absolutely free when you buy that wonderful salad and cooking oil, Kraft Oil. I don't understand women. I drive Grace down down to do her shopping. Go out of my way to be nice to her. She practically hits me over the head with her purse. I don't know how a girl can change so much between the parking lot and the information desk. It must be a misunderstanding. I judge I'll phone her and demand an explanation. Well, maybe I shouldn't demand it, but I'll ask for it. Is that you, Auntie? Oh, hello, Marjorie. I didn't know you were here. Well, I've been waiting to see you. What is it, my dear? Have you seen Judge Hooker yet? Yes, I saw him this morning at Peavy. Well, did he invite us to dinner? No, he didn't say a thing about it. That's strange. You know, I gave him every chance to bring it up. As a matter of fact, I'm a little offended that the judge would forget a fine old tradition like our dinner. Well, he hasn't forgotten the occasion, Auntie, because I found a present from him at my door when I came home from the market. Oh, well, he always gave you children some little knick-knack, didn't he? Knick-knack? This time it's a genuine alligator bag. Well, he was always fond of you. That's why I can't understand why the old goat didn't invite us. I wish you'd stop calling him an old goat. Marjorie, I've always called him that. Sort of a term of endearment. You're such old friends, Unky. Why didn't you ask the judge what the matter was when you saw him this morning? Marjorie, I can't just invite us to his house. Now, excuse me a moment. I have to make an important phone call. Grace is upset with me, and I don't know why. She bawled me out in Hogan Brothers right in front of everybody. Oh? Hmm. Guess she isn't home. I made a date to take her out to dinner tomorrow night. Oh, well. Anki. Yes, Marjorie? You mean to tell me you made a date with your girl for tomorrow night? Well, yes. So that's why you don't want to go to the judges. Oh, but I... If this family can't give one evening out of the year to a man who is as nice to me as Judge Hooker was today, I don't know what we're coming to. You, Marjorie, I thought we'd all agreed that unless the judge invited us... And if he had, what would you have said? That you didn't want to come? No. That you had a date with the girl? Yes. Uh, no. Well, anyway, you certainly fixed things. Hmm. I don't know what I did, but I did it again. <laughs> Come to think of it, the old judge was cool toward me and Peavy's. I wonder if I offended him in some way. I'd hate to do that. Hi, Uncle. Hello, Leroy. Hey, Uncle, we going to the judges. No, I've had no word from him. So you can go to a movie or do anything you like. Gosh, I'm kind of sorry we aren't going to the judges. You are? There's something funny about all this, Uncle. The judge came by today. Yeah, he was by Marjorie's, too. Yeah, we both got swell presents. Look, he left me a new wallet with five dollars inside. Well, very handsome, Leroy. Gosh, I wish I hadn't said what I did about going to the judges. Well, the other day you seemed to feel that the judges' fricassee and stereoscope were a little too much for an active boy. Well, I've been thinking about that. Being old faithful again wouldn't be so bad. Stuff like that might help me in my geography. Well, it's a high recommendation for the slides. <laughs> But I guess we'll have to forget about him this year. And I suppose the judge has his reasons for not inviting us. Sit down, please. Yes, Bertie? I thought I ought to tell you I talked to the judge when he came by this afternoon. You did? Yes, sir. That poor man. What did he say? It wasn't so much what he said as the downcast way he looked. Somebody's done that poor man wrong. <laughs> Confounded, Bertie. Don't blame me. He didn't invite us. Oh, nobody's blaming nobody. All I said was somebody done that poor man wrong. Oh, my goodness. Would everybody feel better if I humble myself, go to the judge, hat in hand, and say, Judge, 
We don't understand why you didn't invite us to your confounded dinner this year. Please, may we come? Why don't you, Unc? It sure would be nice if you could make the judge happy. Well, he's eating a lot of crow. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsey, for a man who don't like chicken fricassee, it's nice for you to eat crow. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. Oh, hello, Judge. Mr. Gildersleeve just phoned to see if you were here. Oh, he did? Seem quite anxious to talk to you. Well, if he's going to bring up the matter of our annual gathering at this late date, I'm no longer interested. Did he say what he wanted? No. Well, you might have asked him, Pete. Eh? No, I don't do that, Jim. I have no desire to meet Gildy face to face. But I'd like to know what's on his mind, if he has one. Mm, you've worked up quite a head of steam, Jim. Peavy, my attitude is one of righteous indignation. Well, here's your chance to be indignant. What? Mr. Gildersleeve's coming across the street. I don't want to see him. Well, you have to meet sometime. This town's too small for both of you. Well, to avoid unpleasantness, I'll just step into your phone booth, if you don't mind. Very well. Whatever you do, don't tell him I'm here. Very well, I won't tell him. <laughs> be amusing if Mr. Gildersleeve's coming in here to use the phone booth. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gilmer, please. You haven't seen the judge, have you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh? Was he in here? Yes, he was. So, when did he leave? Well, that's a difficult question. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, fiddlestick. I don't keep a stopwatch on him. Well, I have a feeling he's trying to avoid me. Mm, that could be. If you'd care to use the phone booth, you might get in touch with him. Oh, I phoned his home and office. Nobody knows where he is. You don't say. I'm about to give up. Well, like I say, if you care to use the phone booth. Yeah, I've tried the phone. You haven't tried this one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you seem anxious to get in touch with him. Well, I am. I have to eat crow. Now, we don't serve it here at the fountain, but... How's that? Perhaps I should have brought up the judge's annual dinner the other day. Marjorie and Leroy are upset about it. Yeah, I guess we don't realize how deeply rooted family traditions are. Yeah, I know. If you'll excuse me, I, I have a call to make on my pharmacy phone over here. Uh, go right ahead, Phoebe. Let's see now. What's the number of that phone in the booth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet the judge will jump when the phone rings in his ear. <laughs> Phoebe, somebody's calling your phone booth. Yeah, well, somebody will answer it. Hello? All right, just a minute. Uh, it's for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. For me? See, but you made the call. Yes, but I think the gentleman wants to talk to you. Oh? Hello? You must have the wrong number. This is a public telephone booth. Judge, what are you doing on the line? Is that you, Gildersleeve? <laughs> Is it me? Oh, Balderdash. <laughs> Judge, where are you? I'm in Peavy's pharmacy. You're off your rocker. That's where you are. I'm in Peavy's pharmacy. Well, let's not quibble. I'll come out. He hung up on me. Well, like he says, he's coming out. <laughs> What's going on here? Is this your idea of a prank, Gildy? No, it's mine. <laughs> well, I... I guess P.V. was just trying to get us together, Judge. Well, I did my best to avoid the meeting. Oh, Horace. What's the matter? What's the matter? You didn't invite us to dinner this year. For the first time. I was waiting for you to invite me. Why should we invite you? Uh, maybe one of you fellas should get in the phone booth again. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, P.V. There must be some misunderstanding. Go on, Judge. Gildy, last year at our party, you suggested we have it this year at your house. I did? How could I have forgotten such a thing? I was a little hurt, but I agreed. I felt that you and the children were outgrowing my simple hospitality. Oh, no, Judge. If you mean those old faithful slides, 
Leroy was asking about them just today. He was? But I could tell, Gilda, that you weren't eating my dinner with your usual gusto. Your chicken fricassee? Judge, it's my favorite dish. Hmm. <laughs> it is? Well, it isn't too late for me to plan the dinner. No, 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 no. You come to our house. I invited you. All right, if you insist. You bet. Hey, wait a minute. Just happened to think. I gave Bertie the day off. Oh? Uh, gentlemen, may I make a suggestion? What is it, Peavy? That Peavy's pharmacy provide the dinner. Oh. oh that's very nice of you, Peavy. I mm, saw, Mr. Gillespie. I'm happy to be able to get you two together. <laughs> right, George. Everything's turned out great. <laughs> At dinner, what will we celebrate with, Peavy? <laughs> Chicken fricassee. Peavy! <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. This is the last announcement of Kraft Oil's sensational popcorn offer now featured at your grocer's. Tomorrow, get a package of Jolly Time popcorn absolutely free when you buy a bottle of Kraft Oil. The Kraft folks make this offer to urge you to discover that the easy way to get fluffy, tender popcorn every time is the Kraft Oil way. Prove it tomorrow. Get your gift package of Jolly Time Popcorn absolutely free when you buy Kraft Oil. Peavy, I want to thank you for providing that fine dinner last night. Well, I enjoyed the evening myself. Yeah, you know, that was a master stroke, inviting Grace Tuttle to join us. Gave me a chance to explain my misunderstanding with the judge. Well, I'm glad, Mr. Gildersleeve. Miss Tuttle is a most attractive young woman. Yeah. You know, last night, I didn't even mind looking at the judge's stereoscopic slides again. <laughs> what do you think of them, Peavy? <laughs> I didn't see him. I was looking at Miss Tuttle. <laughs> 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 uh, it's Leroy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Hi, Aunt. Hello, my boy. Well, I just did my good deed for today. You're fine. Uh, Leroy's a Boy Scout, Peavy. Well, it's a Boy Scout week. You bet. And the Boy Scouts and Scoutmasters deserve a pat on the back. They're doing a fine job. Okay, pat me on the back. I did a good deed. Oh, yes. Uh, what was it, Leroy? Well, Mrs. Peavy's parrot got away, and I caught it. You call that a good deed? <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, you don't seem very fond of the parrot. Well, I don't like some of the things it says to me. Oh? Every time Mrs. Peavy and I disagree, the parrot says, She's right, Richard. I haven't won an argument since that bird came into the house. <laughs> Good night, folks. is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Mary Ship, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Neekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight, a big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of Kraft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy Kraft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of Kraft prepared mustard at your food store. (laughs) 
Yes, friends, this is Boy Scout Week, an all-time high of more than 3,300,000 Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorers, and Adult Leaders are observing their 44th birthday throughout the United States. A fine organization making a great contribution to the boyhood of America. Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC Radio Network. Mm-hmm. 